Yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. It's such a diverse bunch of people that come together, the, yeah. you know, the, the different perspectives and different crazy you know, attitudes adds up to something much, much greater than the sum of us as, as individuals. And thus, that's why we've had this project for so long. You know, I was looking at my Drupal D.0 uh, profile, and my profile number is 5622. It's Whoa. been 11 years and eight months now uh, that I've been in this community, and, you know, I've sort of watched it, you know, back when we started, you know, it was really campy and fun and small, and now all of a sudden, look where we are. You know what I mean? 11 years, the, the software now is about to take this new transcendence into its eighth version, which is actually quite exciting. You know, the community is amazing on that level, that we've had that much longevity. Um, I think it's a sort of unusual for open source projects to have that, you know? Yeah. My user number is still under 100,000, but, uh, but it's an order of magnitude uh, larger than yours. So well done. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. how, did you, um, how did you discover Drupal back in the day? I'm thinking if your user number is under 6,000, that you came in, did you ever use Drupal 3? No, I came in right at the beginning of Drupal 4, actually. and the. You know, it was really by happenstance that I ended up finding Drupal. Uh, somebody, I had started a club here in San Francisco because I sold my company um, in 2000. I sold my company. I ran an ISP here for many, many years. So we were one of the first internet service providers, connectivity people. We sold that. And then, you know, there was sort of a dry zone there for a couple of years. And so we started a club. It was focused around offshore fishing. And ultimately, um, we were using like front page and stuff like that. And I put a call out to my club. I said, hey, <laughs> what should we use? And some random guy who had done very well in the beginning of the internet era just sent email. He said, hey, man, you should check out Drupal. Cool project. And so I took a look at it and installed it. And I was like, well, this solves all my immediate problems right now. And from that point on, I began to get the idea that Drupal was actually a pretty good way to, to make some money as an independent developer as a website manager, uh, so I got myself a little cluster of clients, and I was doing really primarily, we started as website management as opposed to content management, you know, and then it's just evolved from there. I mean, I was a, sort of a small-time developer guy for a number of years and then just got involved deeper and deeper into the Drupal community, most specifically focused here in San Francisco. So what would you say, what would you say made you stick with it all these years? Well, um, there are a couple of things. I thought it was a very free and open community that I could actually make some money in, um, and that was very exciting. And um, it was just allowed me a, a lot of freedom. Things were always changing. You, were, you know, it was one of those projects where you could be on the uh, on the beginning edge of the curve rather than sort of trying to catch up to the curve. And as things changed, it was actually relatively easy to learn. Now that has obviously changed now. I've changed my focus um, in terms of what I do, but I feel as though Drupal now is, you know, if you were a new person getting into it, it's a, it's a little daunting, takes a little time, you know, but once you sort of figure out how those pieces all work, it still is something that you can really grasp into. And I, it was just endless. I think that's probably was another thing. It was endless. Drupal, um, Drupal I stuck with it because I haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet. <laughs> right. It never it never ended and it really solved a lot of immediate problems and then it evolved. And so it's solved and then evolved and now it's evolved into really what chapter three specializes in, which is more of a content strategy, um, digital experience management kind of thing. You know what I mean? That it's sort of the glue in the middle of all of those things, which is super duper exciting. Okay, so tell us who you are and what you do nowadays. Well, my name is John Faber, and I am the managing partner of Chapter 3. Um, I've been working at Chapter 3 now for almost five years. Um, and uh, as the managing, well, there are two managing partners at Chapter 3. Stephanie Cannon is my partner at Chapter 3. We both operate the organization 
uh, sort of from different angles. I'm more on a business outside focus, and Stephanie is more on a operations inside focus, so we complement each other very, very well, but it's a complete team effort at Chapter 3. We have a wonderful team of developers, and we primarily focus in on, you know, Drupal development, Drupal strategy, training, support, <clears throat> and now... Um, going into the latter part of this year, we're focusing a great deal of our energy on being one of the first shops to begin to implement real Drupal 8 sites. So that is a challenging, challenging and exciting uh, at this moment right now, but uh, that, that's primarily what I do and who I am. Talk about something cool that you've built or done with Drupal. Oh, wow. Uh, well, we have a couple of, I mean, we really run the gamut of cool things that we do with Drupal. So we have had some very large projects that are very, very cool, you know, with universities and things like that. Um, UCSF is obviously one of our, one of the universities that we're quite proud of because we built a template for them. We partnered with, you know, we did a deal with Acquia. It's a very large proven entity of multi-site strategy. And great digital strategy that can create templates that normal people can create websites on the fly. You know, I mean, they, they, they threw out several hundreds of websites um, with a, and it didn't create a, an overwhelming support stream for them because the strategy of the template was right on. So I thought my team really, really executed very, very well on that project. We have another project right now for a very large company where we took an extremely complex um, cold fusion system that had been grown over years and years and years and years. It was a, the, the cold fusion layer cake from hell. And we have a team of senior developers that really bite into this stuff. They enjoy taking this stuff apart and putting it back into Drupal. And um, I don't, I can't really say the name of the project because we're not entirely completed with it, but this is a simulator project, a data simulator project with an extremely large um, uh, storage uh, of data. It's not quite big data. It's not that large, but it is very large. And this company sells these things to their clients for between six dollars and $10,000 a report. Uh, so it's a very, very important product for them. And um, it didn't work before. And now it's in Drupal. And uh, really the coolest thing about it is, is that the client has realized Oh my God, I'm no longer stuck. I can do whatever I want now. <clears throat> and so my team is sort of moving into this next phase of like, all right, well, you were never able to do that before, but now it's in Drupal. It can do freaking anything. What do you want to do? And so they're a little bit overwhelmed by that right now. They're trying to get their heads around it. But these are the neat things that you can do with Drupal is stick them into, into organizations, blows people's minds at the flexibility that they have with a well-built system. The, the, the data and reporting tool, right, all of a sudden they have the power of views and they can build any report they want ever instead of, um, I'm imagining fiddly old hard-coded weirdo queries and cold fusion unmaintainable madness. It's, it's going to change their business model. Their business is going to grow incredibly because of the power that this system will give to them. So, um, you know, and then another incredibly cool project that we're working on is, um, like, again, I can't really talk about the client because we're under NDA with these guys, but hopefully for DrupalCon we'll be able to roll it out. We're really working hard on that. And this is really the first adoption of Drupal 8 um, by a very large organization. <laughs> this is not like, a, you know, mom and pop shop, small place who adopted Drupal 8. This is a Fortune 50 organization that is basically said we want to be innovative and we're willing to roll the dice on Drupal 8. And we picked chapter 3 to do it because you know we have a, a, a we have this support mechanism with Alex Pot in place right now to you know sort of give us a, a lot of legitimacy and be sort of a channel like if shit goes wrong we're like ah! <laughs> you know let's ask Alex and he's able to answer these questions for us and we're going to deliver this um, Drupal 8 site and I'll have to tell you, it really excites me because I feel like as soon as we have this adoption rolling with somebody legit and they see some success on this thing that um, Drupal 8 is really going to be the future for a lot of organizations who've invested their time in it, Chapter 3 being one of them. So again, I think that's the most exciting thing that we got going on. I, I don't know, it, it, we'll, you know, we're not quite there yet, but we're, we're pretty far down the road. Drupal 8 is, um, 
I've been playing with it a little bit, and I've been talking with a lot of people about it. I gave, uh, I've given about uh, four or five presentations on it in the last few weeks because there's this question. Mm -hmm. There's this question right now: When should we implement it, right? And 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 especially as mere mortals, uh, maybe without, um, you know, without a, a huge, you know, the. The, those of us who are out there with maintaining a pipeline, working for clients, keeping things going, you know, um, maybe without your resources to, to, to invest um, in being ultra, ultra early adopters. Um, and yet I'm seeing these incredibly interesting things. I think that, uh, for example, Drupal 8, we're not going to need nearly as many contributed modules because that architecture is so flexible and it allows us to put things together. I don't, and I don't even think we've, we've dipped our toes in the water yet for for what the new like this best best practices and build patterns are going to be, it's it's just, oh. um, you know, for example, it's kind like, of the beginning of Drupal a little bit again. You know what I mean? Back to like almost the beginning of Drupal. You know, where when Drupal four and Drupal three came out, people knew that this was a platform that had extensibility, legs, and this extremely cool modular system that allowed you to do anything. And I feel as though Drupal eight with CMI. Um, and some other tools that are built into this is we're right at the beginning of like, oh my God, now we have a new platform that can do, we already know what the old platform can do. It's great, but this is great times two or three or actually great times unknown. You know what I mean? And that to me really is exciting. Yeah, and it's the great times unknown that keeps, keeps getting me more and more excited because I keep hearing a new concept. I know, I know the keywords, I know, you know, Oh, we built this system to do this way, and we ripped out the admin backend, and now it's all views. And we, you know, everything's an entity, and every entity is fieldable, and every can, you know, they can refer to it. And all of a sudden, it's just, and all of a sudden, this the the matrix, right, of possibilities just expands in every direction. Every time I get a handle on, oh, so I could build my own backend. Well, that's super cool, right? Then, but I also realize a hundred more things that I could do with those. And and so yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're excited about this too. <laughs> I am, and I think that the other uh, thing that we're going to begin to see is, is that, you know, Drupal community over the last 10 years, it got a little insular, you know what I mean? Like, it was kind of a roundish ball that, <clears throat> you know, was very tight, and, and, and getting in at times was confusing because of the way that Drupal had evolved in this community structure. And I think another super exciting, yet obviously painful to some people and to the community in general is this uh, idea that we stuck, stuck Symphony in there, right? And the, the whole point of that was to attract new PHP developers to Drupal and that new PHP developers would be like, this is a damn cool platform to work on. I want to move from what I'm doing now into this. And I think that Drupal 8 is going to give us that stepladder to bringing in this new crew of people that are going to see an extremely powerful, well-built platform most especially due to Alex Potts, you know, extremely conscientious contribution to, to our community and making sure that this thing is what everybody wants it to be. And I think that that's really cool because, you know, talent has always been an issue. If we can all of a sudden allow that talent stream to open up into Drupal 8 and make, you know, exciting, unknown things, I mean, that is definitely great for everybody. Yeah, and I've been talking with some uh, Symphony people uh, and some PHP people out there, and at a minimum, they're fascinated and interested in, in, that, that we've actually pulled ourselves, bootstrapped ourselves out of that crazy um, land that, of code that we were in. And right. I know um, uh, I directly, uh, a friend of mine uh, who is a Symphony and C developer who's launched a D8 customer site, he opened up Drupal 8 and he said, oh, this is just a dialect of Symphony. I can totally work with this. And, Isn't that great? Yeah, and he's had a D8 uh, site with uh, multiple external integrations uh, for a customer doing e-commerce. He's had that live since last summer, uh, northern summer, so last July, August or so, 2014. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. That is. Um, and so, again, these are the cool things that are going on in Drupal right now that Chapter 3 is sort of a little bit in the middle of, um, and we're just super excited to see how the community, uh, how all boats are going to rise because of this new thing that is coming, you know, basically because of Drupal 8.
long time, you've developed quite the collection of these things, you know. Wait, John, here now. Yeah. Now we're now we're show show off your T-shirt. This is really old school. Okay, it's uh, St. Patty's Day, and what does it say there, Jim? Don't hack core. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's now been I think a that, that is a. I think that that is a vintage Morton DK from about 2000 and mm, let me get let me think about this. I'm thinking 2008 9 for that shirt. It's been a while. I I'm, I'm not exactly sure. You know, I've been in the Drupal community now for a really long time, so I've lost track of time in Drupal land. More, uh damn. I don't have that one, but I have the one that he was making at the same time which was brown and it had a string of like punctuation, exclamation, question mark, star, asterisk uh -huh. in, bracket, in brackets, and it said, "Translate this." <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, it's very campy. That's one of the things I love about the Drupal community is the creativity that extends beyond the software and into the visual designs on T-shirts. <laughs> <you know? laughs>